Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Silver Crown. If this is your first time visiting, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell, the notification button next to the subscribe button so that you'll be informed every time I upload a video. And for those of you who've been tracking with me for this past year, thank you for hanging in there with me. I appreciate you being there and I appreciate your input. And let's jump right into it. Today, uh, I figured I'd bring my husband on Chris with me after my big chop. I'm, tomorrow will be one week into my big chop. And some of you might be looking at my hair saying, that doesn't look like a big chop. She has a lot of hair. Well, I transitioned for a year uh, and I had 12 inches of hair between my processed hair and my natural hair. So I cut off the six inches of the processed hair last week and I have uh, kept my hair in two strand twist. Uh, I think I did band two knots the first time. This time is two strand twist. So that's what it looks like. And I even went back and cut off a little bit more after I got it all sectioned off and uh, I didn't like the way the ends were looking and I found a couple of little straggly ends that were still processed. So I decided to cut those off. So that's the update. And uh, if you want to see those two videos, I can leave the description. I mean, I can leave a link in the description box below so that you can see that. And anyway, so today I wanted to bring my husband on because he's been with me through this whole journey. And um, to just let you guys get some idea about how it may affect your man. You know, when, you, <laughs> when you're going through all this, my husband has been very supportive of me through this whole process. And um, some questions uh, that some of you might have is, well, how does he feel about it? Or, you know, what made you do it and things like that. So I'm just going to let him ask whatever questions he has and uh, say whatever he wants to say about my journey so far. So what are your thoughts and comments about it, Chris? Well, hello, happy peoples. Um, glad to be here uh, to support my beloved. Isn't she adorable? You better agree with me. Uh, when she started with her hair journey one year ago, uh, why did you first decide to go natural and get off the creamy crack? Well, I have been processing my hair. I started at 15 years old, and I started using Revlon products. Uh, I found that they burned my scalp, so I transitioned from Revlon products and then I just started hot pressing my hair. My mother had always hot, used a hot comb on my hair. And so I went back to that for a while. And of course, you know, when you have um, hair like ours, all it takes is a little bit of humidity and moisture and it will revert back to its natural curl pattern. Well, I didn't know anything about curl patterns back then. Back then it was taboo. Back then you were made to feel like you didn't have good hair, whatever that means. Um, I've come to learn that good hair is just healthy hair, no matter what type your hair is. But um, so from the time of 15 up until um, a year ago, up to 57, I processed my hair one way or another. Uh, I went to, I did wigs, I did, I did a couple of sew-ins. Um, that didn't work out too well because I cut it out myself and out with my hair with it. But um so I decided that uh, moving to Canada, where in the part of Canada where we are, it's always humid and moist most of the time. And I was having a hard time with the hot curlers and the pressing my hair and all that. And then I started noticing um, when I would get into the shower that I was having a lot of hair coming out in my comb. Now, I always had long hair, pretty long hair, at least shoulder length. When I was younger than that, it came down to the middle of my back. But um, I was noticing that there was a lot of hair in the comb, but because my hair was so thick, nobody else would really be able to tell the difference. But I could tell the difference. When I would wash my hair, it felt thinner to me. And then my husband started saying, wow, there <laughs> sure is a lot of hair in that comb, you know, and he started noticing it as well. And I decided maybe I should just stop using relaxers. Um, I didn't know if the relaxer is what was doing it or if it was the stress in my life at the time. We had uh, were moving into an RV and had a lot of family transitions and things going on. 
I was getting older, hormonal stuff. I didn't know what was <laughs> causing it, but I just decided to stop using it. Well, I, you know, for three years, I talked about not using relaxers anymore. And then finally, I said, that's it. I'm not doing it. So on my birthday, um, well, actually, the month of December, uh, when I was due to put a relaxer in my hair as a, a touch-up, I said, I'm not doing it. And I colored my hair from the age of 15 up until about 25. I colored my hair natural black. And so I had always had something, some kind of chemical or something in my hair. And I just decided I didn't want to do it anymore. You know, I was, I was getting older. Sometimes when you get older, your hair uh, growth may slow down. And plus, you know, if your hair growth is slowing down and it's coming out, that ain't not good. So I decided, yeah, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And so that's how I ended up going natural. What was the final straw for you that said, it's time? Well, watching my hair come out in the comb was one of the things. The other thing was I was doing a lot of research, trying to figure out, okay, so how do I get started on doing this? And um, what are the different stages? What's the expense? Does it cost more? Does it cost less or whatever? And then I ran across a video concerning uh, African-American women and how there had been this um, repeated theme of some type of a green slime or something in their in their brain or somewhere between the skull and the brain, the membrane, uh, during autopsies. And I thought, what in the world? And the thing that these women had in common was and that greatly they... greatly increased rates of Alzheimer's. Yes. Uh, now, of course, you know, the, the uh, scientific community is not really going to say this because they want, you know, and neither the hair product companies because they want you to continue to buy their stuff. They don't really care if it kills you in the end. But... Um, it just seemed to me that there was a link between um, the chemicals going in right directly into the skull, right next to your brain, with the, with the metals and the chemicals and stuff that are in those process, processing products that could be contributing to Alzheimer's um, and things like that. And so and because my mother passed away from Alzheimer's, my mother had beautiful hair and she wanted her hair processed and I never understood why and I think it had something to do with that old mindset that African-American women came up in that you were not beautiful unless you had a European um, look about you your hair had to be straight and you had to be fair skinned or light skinned or something like that and I never really bought into that I was processing my hair just for the convenience I guess you know uh, but it could be that subliminally sub subliminally I thought what other women may have been thinking. I don't know. So, I don't know. You may not be able to see it from where you're sitting, but let me tell you, for, upon close inspection, she has the most beautiful hair, and it's 100% natural at this point, which is great. So, tell me, once you first started researching the whole thing of going natural, mm -hmm. did you get a lot of conflicting information, or did you just have to pick and choose what you thought might work for you? That's a good question. Um, the only conflict that I found with information had to deal with products. And I came to learn that um, the reason that the information might be conflicting is because of the different hair types in our community. So we don't have the corn silk. Most of us don't. Uh, we range anywhere from uh, uh, somewhat straight to very, very tightly coiled. And uh, depending on what product you use, it may or may not work for your hair type. So that was the only conflict that I found. Uh, the other information that I found, which uh, turned out to be very helpful, was the types of tools that you use in your hair or if you decide to use tools in your hair. Either one is fine. You're going to have shedding and breakage either way, uh, but one will... Uh, lessen the amount of breakage if you just use your fingers. The drawback from using your fingers is that you may not be able to get the finer um, uh, tangles that you would if you do what I called in a previous video the pyramid step, which is where I start out with a wide tooth comb, then I go to a medium tooth comb, then I go to a small tooth comb, and then I style it. So, um, but now that's when I had mixed textures, processed hair and um, 
natural hair. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Uh, this will be, tomorrow will be my first time washing my hair um, since I big chopped it and styled it the first time. So I'll have to see how it feels in the shower. But anyway, here's my two strand twist out. As you can see, uh, when I initially did this video, I had, my hair was down to here, right? Uh, when I did the big chop. But now it's a little bit shorter because I found, like I said, the scraggly ends and I wanted to get them off. So so regarding types of hair, was it a surprise to you that there were so many different types of hair and how to go about identifying each type so that you could tell what type of hair that you had and what you needed to do? I still don't know what type <laughs> of hair I am. Um, I I didn't find it confusing. I did find it interesting that there were, you know, I mean, you could visually tell that someone across the street, their hair may not be the same texture as mine. Um, I didn't find it, I didn't find that confusing. What I, I, it's just a matter of me getting to know my hair. So after I did the big chop, now it feels like I started over uh, because I have a completely different grade of hair that's not mixed with anything else other than its own mixture. It's not chemically treated, processed, no color. I stopped coloring my hair the same time I stopped processing my hair. And so the color that you see is my natural color with just a tiny, tiny, very small amount of hair color left over on some of the, you know, the longer strands. But some of that is my color. It's just yeah. salt and pepper. So... Yeah. One of the things that was really surprising to me and which I did not know as I accompanied my beloved on her hair journey was the fact that uh, black women in general tend to spend a lot of time on their hair. I was hearing stories of women going to the salon and being there for six hours and eight hours to get their hairs did. And <laughs> man, that just blew my wig back because as a man, of course, I'm interested in the wash and go. That's what I, I you know, come out of the shower, run a towel or a comb through it and boom, out the door. Uh, but I understand that as far as uh, keeping, taking care of your hair, uh, it might be a little bit different for ladies. Now, I imagine that you now having the natural hair, you gorgeous thing, you, <laughs> that, you, that it may be substantially easier to take care of than when you had all the treatments and you had to do this and do that and do the other thing. It looks to me like you're getting to the point where you'll be able to finish washing it, do something with it, and then uh, in relatively short order, uh, you, you'll be done with it. Is that s what it seems like to you? No. <laughs> it, is, it is much more work now. Uh, when your hair is processed and it's just straight, you know, you wet it, it falls straight in the shower. You wet this, it draws up in the shower. I mean, it'll initially lay down, but then as your hair starts to take on water, it'll start to pull up and draw up. So when you get out of the shower, you have to detangle probably once again, unless you did some twisting or whatever in the shower. It's a completely different um, way of caring for your hair than when it's straight. It, takes, it does take more time, but a lot of that depends on how elaborate the hairstyles are that you want to do. Uh, when I first did these two-strand twists, I think I started out with, what did you, you counted them, and it was something like 36? Um, yeah, I think you started around 29, and then you went up to 33, then you went from there to 37, and then you went from there to 30. And then I went to 40-something. 40 42. And, and then I decided to stop. 45. And I... So anyway, um, it, it takes more time, and that's why... Uh, if you look at some of the YouTube videos uh, in the natural hair community, you'll see people talking about, you know, wash day. <laughs> because depending on... <laughs> wash day could literally be a whole day, depending on what, what they're doing and how long their hair is. Of course, the shorter your hair is, the easier and quicker it is to take care of it. Mine's is kind of an awkward kind of a length. It's not long. It's not short. It's just kind of there right now. Uh, but if it were longer, it would take me uh, much more time than it's probably going to take me now. My daughter has been, both of my daughters are natural. One had been natural for 14 years, and she just recently chopped all her hair off. She had locks. 
and she just recently, uh, in the last couple of months, cut all of her 14-year hair off and decided to start over because she was tired of it. And my oldest uh, has been natural for four years, and her hair is 12 inches long, and that is her natural hair. Mine's was 12 inches long, and half of that was processed hair. So it takes her a long time to do her hair because it is long. When she uh, when it gets wet, she said she was in the shower, and it was getting wet, and it was starting to relax, and then it was going down, 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 down. She was like, wow, and her hair was just you know, going down, down, down. The wetter it got, the more the water drug on her hair and pulled it down past her her, uh, her shoulder. So that's lovely. Mine's is not there yet. I just cut it. So there you go. No, it won't be easier. Not, it'll be, it won't be bad right now. But I can't put it in my, I don't believe I can put it in my uh, two French braids that you guys that have been following me all this time, used to seeing me do two French braids or two flat twists. Yeah, I won't be able to do that right now. Well, it so. does seem to me that you'll be using a lot less product. It seemed that when you were had your hair um, permed, mm -hmm. that there was an awful lot of product that went into it on a daily basis and, and quite a bit of time. So I'm hopeful, keeping my fingers crossed, that uh, it, it won't be as time consuming for you because I realize that it's a highly personal thing, the way you wear your hair and uh, how you feel about your hair and uh, that you like to spend time with you and your hair and you. But the, I'm also hopeful that you'll, you'll find products that work for you so that you'll be able to <clears throat> uh, wash, uh, then uh, treat however you want to treat it and then go. And that we won't have to adjust our departure times to give you four hours of lead time before we can go out. <laughs> uh, I, I know, uh, for example, that the, the, the two-strand twist that you've been doing, that takes time. But it's the mechanical amount of time to actually put the hair into the, to the style that you want. And not so much putting in this product, then following it with another 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 product, and then throwing a wig hat on top of everything and going out the door. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I think it's going to be a much healthier alternative than treated hair. Um, and I can advise any gentleman who might be watching this channel that stick with it. Uh, because, you know, your lady is going to be the best judge of the type of hair that she wants. And she did approach me and said, uh, I'm thinking about going natural with my hair. What would you think about that? I said, baby, it's your hair and you're the one that has to wear it. And I want you to do whatever you're comfortable with. And about three or four months later, she'd come to me and say, you know, I've been giving some more thought to the natural hair. What do you think about that? But I was unstintingly mm, encouraging with her even though at times it was uh, a long journey and at times she was not pleased with the way things were turning out. But look at her now. She belongs on the cover of a magazine. Beautiful you. Thank you. And so for all the ladies out there, if, if you're thinking of going natural, uh, I can recommend to you that it would be in your best interest to do so. Because if you can look half this good, then, you know, you're, you're going to be in good shape. Well, thank you. You're quite welcome. And thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me on. Thank you for having me on your program. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, guys. That's a wrap. I just wanted you to hear it from uh, a male perspective and uh, his questions and things like that. Uh, your, your partner or whoever may have some of the same questions. Yeah. And so uh, I just wanted to provoke your thinking, you know, get you to think about some of these things. So if people ask you, then, you know, you've thought about it and you know how to answer them, right, with an intelligent answer rather than just sounding like you don't know what you're talking about. So anyway, thank you for coming. I'm getting ready to do another video talking to you about uh, my hair color. Someone asked me, how do I keep my hair so white? And so uh, stay tuned for the next video that's coming up next, and we will deal with that and my own personal feelings about how I feel. 
since I've done this big chop. So thanks for coming with me today. Thank you for hanging in there. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell right next to it so that you can get notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you like my channel, please recommend it to others. And don't and forget I, to comment if you have any questions yes. or comments about the channel. Or suggestions. Or suggestions. Something that you want me to talk about or yeah. questions that you have. Let me know. And I will be very happy to address whatever I can address. And I will see you in my next video, which is coming up shortly. All right. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Be blessed.